Starting in 2021, you know, you removed in the first year it was upwards of 500,000 mystery snails. And then now this year we reached 1 million. There is an invasive species taking over communities across North America, one that is both bigger and far more resilient than the spotted lanternfly, the Chinese mystery snail. The problem is so bad in some parts of the country that the government is stepping in to try and prevent the spread of these snails. It is no small feat because the female can give birth to as many as 150 offspring. Brooke Scryer is an assistant coordinator with the Invading Species Awareness Program in Ontario. You know, one of the main reasons, at least anecdotally, that I've heard as to why they're called mystery snails is because um, there was a story about somebody who put them into uh, an aquarium and they only put one snail into an aquarium and before they knew it they had all of these different snails in these aquariums. They uh, actually incubate their young within their uterus so they give birth to live snails that actually have you know shells on them and everything. So that's where the mystery came from. You know, actually gives them a competitive advantage over other snails, right? Like when you have a species that lays eggs, that, you know, creates a situation where those eggs are uh, vulnerable to predation uh, or, you know, water changes, you know, drought or something like that. If they become exposed to air, there's all sorts of threats to those eggs. But when they're being incubated within the female uh, snail, it gives them a much better likelihood of actually surviving. This is why government agencies in Texas, Georgia, and Ontario are amping up removal efforts before September, when the females typically start to give birth. I've actually seen it happen, and we found some mystery snails. Uh, I was with a, a colleague of mine, and we collected some of those mystery snails and just stuck them in a bucket. When we looked back in the bucket, we actually noticed that there were, there were snail offspring in the bucket now, which weren't there originally, obviously. So we must have picked up a female snail. The snails have a hard shell that protects them from predators. They are able to survive in climates with temperatures ranging from zero to over 100 degrees. They are also able to survive for months outside of water. We were removing all these snails by hand and we collected something like two to 3,000 snails over a two day period. And some of those bags of snails I brought back to my, my current residence because you know I live in a forested area, somewhere where obviously they wouldn't be able to exist. And they were put into a hole, like I said, uh, you know, in a very dry area. And what ended up happening was a few months later, I think it was in September or October, I actually went out to check on them. But I noticed that when I picked up some of the snails, they were still quite heavy. And I found that very interesting. And then I, I took some inside and I put them back in water. And sure enough, they came back to life. Mm -hmm. So they spent three months out of water and were still very much alive and came back to life in, in the aquarium um, that I was holding them. Like all invasive species, mystery snails can wreak havoc on the ecosystems they invade. There is also a risk to humans as well, because these snails can serve as hosts for a number of parasites. Jim Page, a biologist with the Department of Natural Resources Wildlife Division in Georgia, says that officials are working to convey this risk to people as the snails start to take over some lakes. That in Georgia, you can't actually possess these uh, mystery snails legally. So we're also trying to make them aware that if you do possess them and you decide to eat them, uh, if you're going to eat them, then you're taking a risk, right? Because these, these parasites, these things can carry, can certainly be transferred to people. Uh, and if they make you sick, it's gonna be a really bad day, uh, especially depending on the, the, the thing that you get. If it's rat lungworm, uh, that one can be fatal, uh, not all the time, but can be. In Georgia and Ontario, the snails have been spreading at a rapid rate over the past few years. Obviously, when you when you first start seeing them, you may just see you know one, two, three, four, just a handful, so to speak, here and there. But as they begin to reproduce and really establish themselves, it's nothing to see hundreds and, and in some cases thousands of them uh, really, you know, spreading across a, a water bottom. Yeah, starting in 2021, you know, we removed in the first year was upwards of 500,000 mystery snails. And then now this year we reached 1 million. And, you know, going back to how these were removed, oftentimes it was by hand. So when you consider the fact that like, you know, these volunteers, two, 200 up to 400 now were literally hand removing these snails. But the fact that we were able to remove that many snails is really indicative of people's desire to, to see change, as well as their desire to just protect their environment.
The snails have been in this country since the late 1800s. They were sold in San Francisco fish markets. In recent years, they have been adopted by some as pets on account of their large size. Those snails can quickly create problems if their owner decides to return them to water. This is why officials say it's crucial to contact local agencies after coming across a mystery snail or any invasive species. We really rely on the public. You know, we only have just so many employees as a department, so we really rely on the, the help of the public to, to be our extra set of eyes out there and really report things, both mystery snails and other unusual things they see, and help us be able to track that stuff, know where it's at, so we can respond to it. Even with all this outreach and work trying to combat the spread of these snails, officials are clear that eradication is not a possibility at this point. But removal efforts are creating a strong sense of community among some. Just to, to see these people going out there doing this type of work is, is you know, truly inspirational. This is Inside Edition Digital.